Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Conjuring the Dead. Here we go. All right, so a little creepy, but it is also awesome. So let's dive into it and see how it was created. So going over here to the synth tab, this one we're gonna be using engine one sample, engine number two wavetable, and we're gonna be using all three slots for the utility engine, as well as both filters and quite a bit of effects here. So let's turn off our effects for now and let's kind of go one by one through all this crazy stuff and see what's happening here. So for the first one is going to be a sample engine here and we're gonna be using the vibrating matrix voltage and that can be found in drones and ambience, kind of close here to the bottom, vibrating matrix voltage there so this engine isn't really tuned to anything positive or negative it's going to be at zero we're going to be using a little bit of unison at two voices stereo is spread 100 percent and the detune is at about three percent now we are going to be using the granular engine here so the values for that the density is 25 hertz this is going to be default so i didn't touch the center knob and the size is going to be 491 milliseconds so just with this engine it sounds something like this So we kind of already have that creepy vibe. And this one is getting sent to filter number one, which is this multi-mode, which we're gonna go over in just a second here. For the next engine, this wavetable, we turn this one on and this sounds just like this. Kind of giving us a bright, weird kind of texture stuff. So this one is called Electro Tibet and it is on pigments three and maybe a little bit, uh, I don't know, one, Two, two, one quarter, I don't know, down the way. But yeah, Electro Tibet is right over here. And for this one, we're not changing the pitch as well. And also voices too, because we don't really want too many voices because the, the more you get, the more you kind of clutter the sound. So in this situation, the less is a little bit more. So two voices unison, the detune is also at 3% and the stereo is 100% here. Now, as you notice here, this position is moving back and forth very, very slowly. And that's modulated by LFO one at an amount of 0.25. So let's dive into LFO one and kind of take a look at that real quick. So this one is going to be free running. So anytime we hit a key, that doesn't really matter. The LFO is just going to be going slow back and forth regardless. So it's not going to get re-triggered. It's just going to live its life over and over and over and over again, kind of like what we do in our lives. And the rate is going to be in hertz, and the value is specifically 0.119 hertz. And that's getting sent to filter number two right over here. Now for engine number three, or the utility engine, we're gonna be using a lot of different stuff here. So the first one is gonna be water, the second one vinyl dense, and then the third one is gonna be that sub oscillator, which is really down an octave and it's getting direct out right over here. We don't want it to go to any filters or any FX or anything like that. So it's just gonna be direct out right over there. So this engine by itself sounds something kind of like this here. Now this engine is more so what I like to think of it for a lot of my patches is kind of adding some texture, adding some extra little interesting things to our already created sound, right? We have the engine one and two, we're kind of making our sound, we're building it. Then the third one, the utility engine, you have three different slots to make some cool kind of things here, right? So for the first one over here, this one is gonna be just the water, which has a creepy, but kind of a cool sound as well. And this is going to filter number two, which is the MS-20. It's really just like running water. Hopefully you went to the bathroom before you watched this video. If not, you can always pause it and come back. So yeah, next one is going to be the vinyl dents. So we get kind of that like crackly old kind of sound, but I also wanted to use it in a rhythmic fashion, right? So if you hover over this thing, we do have a macro, which we're gonna talk about the macros in just a little bit. But right here, we have this function number one at a value of 0 0.30. So if we hop into the first function, I called up this preset rhythmic two, and it's kind of just giving this rhythmic kind of shape, right? And it's kind of, we're modulating the volume on that. So that's kind of why it's bouncing up and down like that. And we can kind of see the little uh, ball, I guess, wherever it's at. It's, it moves kind of fast, but basically it's kind of running through the cycle here, giving that rhythmic feeling. Now this is going to be on a rate of one over one, so basically one bar. Now I kind of did this because I wanted it to be obviously rhythmic and it should match different tempos. If you're kind of changing tempos, you still want to keep this rhythmic value to it. 
And then last but not least here, we have the sub oscillator, which is really not too crazy. It's just a sine wave down one octave and it's going direct out. So bypassing filters and effects. So if we have all these on here without any effects, it's just going through some filters. It sounds something like this. So we're pretty much all the way done as far as sound generation generation goes. And if it sounds pretty decent on the uh, on the basic side, as far as like no effects or no crazy modulations, then it's gonna be actually a pretty cool patch once you add some effects and spice it up a little bit. So let's run through our filters a little bit because there is some interesting stuff happening here. So this first engine over here, the sample one is going to filter number one. Now this is the basic multi-mode on a low pass 24. And if we go to the cutoff, it's 8,294 Hertz for the cut of value, but it's ever so slightly getting moved just a little bit by LFO2 by a small value of 0 0.06. So if we go to our LFO2, we can see that this is moving so slow. It's also free running just like the first one that's moving our wave table over here. But this one is running at a rate of 0.103. Because with pads, you always want that kind of that change over time. So just a slight motion of the filter kind of opening up and closing back and forth makes it sound a little bit more organic. So that's kind of the thought process behind that right there. Now, keep in mind for our filter routing, this filter routing, so this output of filter number one is going into filter number two and then to the effects. And we know this right over here because it goes filter one to filter number two. So moving on from there, from the wavetable, this one's going to filter number two because I didn't really want to cut that much high end from, from the sound here. So if we turn off engine number one and the utility and we listen just to number two, that has a lot of top end information that this might cut off and kind of, we don't really, I didn't really want to modulate it with this filter, which is why I send it directly to number two, bypassing this first one. And it's on my personal favorite, the MS-20 filter. Now this cut is kind of doing the same thing with LFO number two. It's pretty much, I believe it, yeah, it's the same value, 0 0.06, kind of just moving it back and forth. But this one is on 6,609 Hertz. And I felt like it sounded pretty good with no resonance on there. And then if we go over here to the utility engine, let's turn this bad boy back on over here. What's right over here. And one, two, three. So these three are basically, or these two are going to filter number two and filter number two. And then this one, remember, it was a direct out. So it's bypassing the filters. Okay, so now let's get into the effects. Let's turn all these back on here and let's go to our effects bank over here. So let's turn off B and let's go over to A and let's turn off these right over here. So this EQ is more so a corrective EQ because with this type of sound, there was a lot of low end kind of mud in there and I kind of wanted to bring out some of that mud and then push a little bit of the highs with this shelf right over here. It's a little bit subtle, but definitely once everything's in there in the mix and stuff, it's nice to cut some of that stuff out. So for these values specifically, we have the, the uh, for the first one, it's going to be the uh, first one, one uh, 155 hertz. The gain is negative 3.36. And then the other one was the high shelf, and that was boosting at 1.56 dB at 5,000 hertz. And next up, we have our typical delay over here. So this one is going to be a time of one over four. And then we didn't really change too much of this here, but find zero feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0 0.040, uh, the high pass 20 hertz, low pass 8,348. And the max value for this is going to be 20, but we have this on a macro, which we're going to get to in just a second here. And that's kind of just adding some extra space to it, which runs then into another delay, which is the pitch shifter delay, which this one is a time of one over four as well. These are both doing the same thing. The spray is 16.6 milliseconds pitch shift down one semitone because you kind of want that creepy vibe once you let go of the notes, so you can kind of hear the, the detuning of the delays. Kind of gives it a little bit more creepy vibe. The feedback's gonna be 0 0.250, high pass 20, low pass 20,000, stereo detune 55.8 cents, and then the stereo offset is gonna be zero. So moving on from there, we just have some reverb and some distortion here. So the reverb, not too crazy, but just makes it a little bit bigger. Pre-delay is going to be 20, size 1.35, decay 0 0.460, stereo width 0 0.5, high pass 200, low pass 8,658 hertz, and the damping is going to be 0 0.6. And then last but not least, we have our distortion on soft clip, and this drive is going to be 23.2, and then this is also going to be on a macro at about 65%.
So diving into these macros here. So this first one is called transform. If we click on this button here, we can kind of see what this is going to. So this is going to be the wavetable two phase distortion. So if we go over to the wavetable two, we can see that this phase distortion. As we turn this here, we can kind of see as this moves here. So take a listen to this. And if we hover our mouse over this, let's uh, exit right over here. So number one, let's see what this percentage is right over here. Close that skew. That is 0 0.60, so 60% of this knob here. And this is also going to the utility noise two volume right over here. So as as I mentioned before, once we kind of hover over this knob, if we close this menu here, we can see that there's two macros over here. So this is also macro one at 10%. So this kind of, once you increase this, it's just gonna increase the volume with that rhythmic feel just by a little bit. Because as we add that different type of transforming, that phase modulation kind of stuff, it really kind of removes that rhythmic stuff. So we're kind of compensating for that there. That's kind of the thought process of that. Next up, we have macro number two, and this is called wave fold. And we're going to the wave table two fold. So right over here, and we're doing an amount at about, what is it here? 0.44, so 44%. Then we have distortion, which we go over here to the effects on our distortion. We can hover over this and say 0.15%. So this all the way down, there's no distortion. Or no, I was looking at this one. So 0.65, so 65%. And I did add quite a healthy amount of distortion just in case you really wanted to degrade the signal. And then the effects over here, if we click on this, we have the FX A2 dry wet, FX A3 dry wet, and FX3. So we have three basic things. So if we go over here to this first one, we have delay, the pitch shifting delay, and then over here for the reverb. So this knob over here, this effects knob is basically controlling those three modules. So all the way to the bottom, we're gonna have no delays, both of these modules, and also no reverb. All the way to the top, we have those effects back. And that's pretty much the creation of this patch in a nutshell. So hopefully you learned something. And if you like this patch, you can get it for free in the video description below. And if there's anything confusing you about pigments, there's also a full course that I've done that you can also check out if you would like to. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.